All right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Gary Bergensky, who is in Maitland, Florida. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing great. You doing okay today? I'm doing wonderful. And Gary is the author of five books. Uh, he has a brand new book just coming out now called My Shriner's Diary. Um, do you want to just give us a quick uh, insight into what this new book's about, Gary? It's a it's a diary or a memoir uh, of a year's time that I spent as the top Shriner in the world, uh, traveling through 19 different countries and helping our members and patients. Uh, it's a day by day account of everything we did, and it's it's very very exciting and to see all the things that Shriners do as volunteers. Yeah, it's excellent. And Gary's other books are, are have titles like Campaign to be a Better Leader, Campaign for a Better Life, Quotes for Leadership Success. So what we wanted to talk about based on the work that you have done and the experiences mm -hmm. that you have had is about, number one, it's about believing in yourself. And the second half of that is giving back. So, um, Gary, why are those two things kind of intertwined in your mind? Well, I tell you, as a youngster, I think uh, my parents really instilled in me that uh, you could really do most anything you wanted in the world as long as you believed in yourself. And, and as I've gone through life, it seemed that not only have I lived that, but I've witnessed that a number of times. Uh, the more you believe in something, the better chance that it's going to come true. And in fact, it will come true if you work hard enough at it. And then when you look at giving back, uh, I've just had a lot of uh, heartfelt experiences through the Shriners organization. Uh, giving back to children uh, through medical care. And as you see those things happen, I mean, uh, you see extraordinary changes in the lives of children and their families. And it's, it's very rewarding and it inspires you to do more and more. Yeah. And for those who aren't familiar with, with Shriners, we have a, a large international audience. You want to just give a, huh? a couple of seconds about what Shriners is? Right. Well, Shriners started in 1872 as a men's fraternity. Uh, and then in 1922, uh, they started Shriners Hospitals for Children. So they're really known probably even more for their hospitals than the fraternity. Uh, they're worldwide. They've serviced children from 176 of the 196 countries. Wow. And uh, they do it all regardless of the family's ability to pay. Mm -hmm. So it's a real humanitarian effort to help kids in the world. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. Uh, so tell me, tell me then, Gary. Okay, so, so self-belief, because we live in a world today where I think it's uh we have kind of almost two opposite ends of the scales we have people with who seem to have inordinate amount of of self belief and self confidence ba mm -hmm. based on sometimes very little and then right. we have a lot of people who feel it's so lacking in self confidence because we're in we live in this kind of comparison culture and everybody can see what's going on mm -hmm. and and people kind of put themselves down because they constantly compare themselves to other people and think that they're not doing very well so how do you overcome how do you get the right kind of of self-belief and the right kind of centeredness in this world of which such drastic contrasts right so the epitome of being able to be a real believer is is to be able to believe in things that you can't prove mm -hmm. for instance religion um, and when you reach a point where you can believe in things in your mind that you can't really even prove is where you make great strides and i found that uh, very, so many people are instrumental as a mentor or someone who encourages someone to believe. Uh, someone that believes in something, if they don't have any support, ground support to help it, they may lose faith in themselves. But if they've got those around them that really inspire them and motivate them, I mean, the, it's just unbelievable what you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things is that sometimes it's, um, I mean, you obviously have to keep doing all the things. I mean, you can't just sit there and believe in yourself, right? I mean, you have to do right. the action. But there, but there does come points where maybe you're up against it. There's a lot of obstacles and belief is the only thing that you have to really carry you through, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you keep doing all the other things, but that belief part is, the, is almost the, the fuel to keep you pushing forward, right? You keep it going, and you've got to have benchmarks as you go along. So if you if you got a a goal of accomplishing something that you believe in, it does it doesn't all happen at once. It happens in, in segments, and each one of those segments that you reach, uh, you become better and better. And it's not that your belief is is uh, beginning coming easier. It's be it's that you're becoming better at what you're doing, mm -hmm. and eventually you will achieve your goal. 
And and the, the giving back part is interesting because um, there's a temptation when you're on your own journey and you're working towards something uh, to sort of go, well, once I get there, then I'll do the giving back, mm-hmm. right? I'll do the giving right, back right. later. Once I'm successful, <laughs> then I'll start to give back. Um, why is it important to give back all the way through your journey? You know, I think from day one, you need to have something or some form of giving back. Uh, giving back builds your character, your integrity, and who you are. And by, by being a giver, and it, may, and it may not be a big thing at, at the beginning. It may be helping out at the blood bank or the food bank or helping do something with kids. But you become known then as someone who's compassionate. And you, when you become known as someone who's compassionate and passionate about what they're doing, you earn the respect of others. And that's how you really succeed. Once you earn the respect of others, it all begins to meld together. And, and I've found that those who give back and help others um, are paid back tenfold of what they, what they give and what they receive back because of what the, the reputation and the respect that they've earned. And I think that's an interesting point that you raised too, Gary, is because I think sometimes people think giving back, it has to be grand gestures or big mm-hmm. scale things. And that's why a lot of people put it right. off till later and say, oh, well, later on, you know, maybe I'll be able to donate yeah. money or that. But it's really, it, it's, it's really giving back in small ways often that of, that makes a big impact. And it can be insignificant and it can be unrecognized even, but even as simple as helping uh, one of your neighbors do something uh, that, that they need some help with if they're elderly or they got young kids or something. But all those little things, um, I can tell you that they, they give me a warm feeling inside and they make me a better person. And, and then you get a little payback. Somebody says, thank you, you know, and it, boy, here you go. You want to do more and more. And it, and it just expands from there. Yeah, because I mean, I always think, especially nowadays, because we live in we live in this strange world today. There's a lot of anger out there. There's a lot of angst. There's a lot of controversy all the time. And mm-hmm. it's very easy for people to kind of sit around and argue about these big issues and get all worked up about them and everything. But if they just pull back a little and and as you say, just try to do some really good things, even in their in their small universe, even in their family, in their neighborhood. I mean, the world would be a better place if people just focused oh, exactly. a little bit more here instead of all focused yep. anger on the big issues. So instead of all that complaining and griping, you know, go do, go do something good and feel about it. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I tell you, if you really think that you're having a bad day and you got a rough life. Go visit one of these children's hospitals and walk Mm -hmm. through there and see what these children are experiencing. See what their parents are experiencing by the pain that they're having because their child is sick. Suddenly your problems kind of diminish. It -hmm. catches you up with the real world and you become appreciative of who you are and what you're doing. You know, for me, and my wife says it great to me, she says, when we go to one of the Shriners hospitals to see the kids, it's the fuel that keeps us going and motivates us to do more. Yeah, and I mean, and that's such a that's such a humbling thing. And it's interesting though the uh, uh, point here because I, I heard or read this recently. It's you know if you're if you're in America, right? And you know we had all that thing about people are like, oh, the rich are so rich and all this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of that. But the reality is that if if you earn, I think it's thirty thousand or above in America, that puts you in uh-huh. the one, that puts you in the one percent of the world actually. Um, and to your point, it's all about perspective, right? So you may be sitting here going, oh, my life sucks and I'm not doing this. But, you know, in in reality, in in perspective of the rest of the world, you're doing pretty darn good. And I think mm-hmm. your point is that you sometimes have to look at um, put your own life in perspective and then say, you know, I'm actually in a fortunate position to be able to do things. Yeah. And not only just for yourself, but but to go out and to motivate other mm-hmm. people to do things. I'll tell you, uh, I found that one of the biggest or greatest compliments that somebody can give you is to ask for your opinion. Mm-hmm. That means that they care about you, that, that they feel that what you have to say has some substance to it. And by building those relationships with other people on uh, how you how you inspire them and motivate them to do more. And, they, and then down the road and they come back and they thank you for helping them get to where they are. I mean, that's that's all about giving back in that way. That's not a monetary way. It's a giving back to people to, to help them become better people themselves. And you, as you said, I mean, you've traveled the world for Shriners and, and, and all of this. And uh, how how universal is this when you go out and you see like when people get involved? I mean, it has the same impact regardless of where you are in the world. right? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm glad you asked that question because... 
in my travels to some of these very poor countries in the world, we in, in America and the United States, I think, become complacent and become uh, expect, expectant of things. Mm -hmm. And when you go to some of these poor countries and you take some health care for the children there, it's extraordinarily 10, 20 times the appreciation. Because if, if it wasn't provided by Shriners or some other mission group, it wouldn't be provided at all. They'd never mm -hmm. get it, right? And so when you go to some of these places, you're just overwhelmed and a mother comes up and hugs you and starts crying and says, thank you for helping my child. I mean, it, it just really touches you. So different parts of the world really are, are different. I, I think we here in the United States expect a lot. Other countries are more appreciative for it. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's and I think that's a great point for everybody listening. And I do think it's and I'm originally from from Ireland, um, and uh, I've often said to people in in the, in the states here. I've lived here over twenty years now. Is that the, sometimes you you need to look outside because when I hear people complaining about their lives in America and America's this, America's that, I'm like, you really yeah. do need to go live yeah. in some other places to get <laughs> a better perspective because I've lived through. So since I've been in America, to be honest, I've lived through three, I think it's three, maybe four recessions, at least three anyway, right? Yep. And f I lived through recessions back in, back in Ireland in the 80s and stuff, right? The three recessions I lived through in America they weren't recessions, not no. recessions as they happen in the rest of the world. So, yeah. I mean, I think perspective is such a wonderful right. thing. Um, uh, I mean, don't when go you, to a country where there's no electricity and uh, there, there's no windows and they're living mm -hmm. in huts and mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to figure out how they're going to take care of their ch children and their transportation is donkey. Go there and figure out, come back home and you, <laughs> wow, what a difference, right? So, yeah. um, so how's that? Things, uh -huh. So, ahead, so, so one of the things, though, obviously, I mean, with with Shriners and that, you have to fundraise, right? Um, right. And there's a lot of, uh, I mean, how do you how do you compete in a world where people are getting dragged in so many different directions, you know, for for charities or for donations to this or their their pet right. whatever issue, their pet issue? How do you how do you compete in that world? Well, there there's a lot of charities out there, and and. Uh, most of them are all worthy of, mm -hmm. of your money, and uh, there's there's a competition out there that goes on. Uh, I, I think with Shriners, because uh, their hospital system is getting ready to celebrate their 100th year here right. in uh, a couple of years, uh, there, there's a large base of people uh, who have been members, the Shriners. Mm -hmm. There's a, a large base of uh, families. They've treated over 1.3 million children, and those group of people really want to give back to those who help them, right? Mm -hmm. so that's big base. Um, then I think the next thing, the expert medical care that they provide touches a lot of people. Even if they didn't have a firsthand experience, they've seen the results. So, but, but I have to say, it's a constant job. And uh, all, all these charities have great uh, donor relation departments that, mm -hmm. that work at. Um, media has become a big part of it, you know, TV and uh, right. Facebook, all those things are a huge part of fundraising as well now today. Excellent. So tell me, going back to your Shriner, my Shriner's Diary, um, uh -huh. are, are there a couple of uh, instances in that book that you just want to share with us? Maybe some really surprising uh, experiences you had or really like life changing experiences that are in the diary? Well, I tell you, as you know, we've talked about healthcare, and mm -hmm. I was over. My wife and I are over in the country of Cyprus, mm -hmm. and uh, a, not a real poor country, but nothing like the United States. Mm -hmm. And we had a clinic over there to have for the last 38 years. And this past year, we went. And uh, there was a lady that came in there. She had called in, and said she had a an appointment made for her son, and uh, she was flying in. Cyprus is a small island. Mm -hmm. And she was flying in, and she was very determined that we had to see her child, and uh, she was running late. She got there on the last day, and this small lady walked in holding this child, uh, who was nearly as big as her, five or six years old. Mm -hmm. And she handed him off to me, and the little guy just kind of clung to me, and you know, for a strange guy, you know, he just clung to me. And the mother stood before me crying and said, if you can help my child, you can take my life. Oh my goodness. And that wow. hit me like a ton of bricks. And it probably was one of the uh, most touching experiences I've had in my life to think that a mother um, 
not only would do that, but that she had enough respect for what we do mm -hmm. to, to say that. Right. So that was that was a, a that was a life changing thing for me, and that's why I said earlier, you know, you visit these places and you think you've got something, you got a bad life, <laughs> you don't have a bad life, you know. Yeah. So that was one of the things that uh, was really good. Um, I had the opportunity to work with President Carter on some some of these okay. projects, and uh, of course, President Carter, I, I can't imagine a better humanitarian than he is with all the work he's done around the world in eradicating diseases. So that was very interesting to be able to work along with the Carter Center mm -hmm. on some projects. Um, every day in the book it has one to six or seven paragraphs depending on the activity and the excellent well I, I highly recommend people um, look at it. when did you say it's coming out uh, be out on uh, the, by the end of this month it's supposed to be out by the 24th of June this year excellent and it's my Shriner's Diary excellent right. uh, all right Gary well we're we're bumping up against the end of our time here um, okay. do you want to just tell people a little bit more about yourself how they can learn more about you Yep. So Gary Bergansky, uh, I'm a business owner in the Orlando area. I'm an author and a motivational speaker. Uh, I have a website called uh, Gary Bergans Gary Motivations, GaryMotivations.com. You can find out a lot about me there, the work I've done and uh, what I can speak to help try to motivate and encourage your group to get excited about what they're doing. Yeah, and I think that's fantastic, Gary. And I think uh, you know the work that you're doing and the books and everything. I think it's a, it's a, it's a it's a gift to be able to bring this perspective to people, especially, as I said, we live in a world of of uh, comparison and people feeling like they they don't have enough or whatever. And I think bringing some perspective is always a great thing. It's it well is. needed. <laughs> All right. Well, my Hi. name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Gary, thank you very much for joining us today. Gary Bergensky, and I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.